right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, the third episode of Pharmacy and Helium, our YouTube series dedicated to making use of hotspot coverage on the People's Network. In the last episode, we had Adam on to talk about his experience using the new console 2.0 that just released last week, actually, July 29th. So in this episode, we're going to talk with Diana um, and just go into some more console related issues and things like that now that 2.0 has officially been released, how she's using um, 2.0, how it's going, all of that. Um, just quick for any of you who don't know, Helium Console is the main way to onboard devices to the network and there's thousands of IoT devices to choose from. And Diane is going to talk about the latest developments and future of console with 2.0 and beyond with what she plans to do with it. So Diana, thank you very much for coming on. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me, yes. Absolutely, yeah. So first, can you just start like your history as a console user? Like when did you start using console? Yeah, so I guess I started using console a very, very long time ago um, when it first came out. Um, however, this was a pet project of mine. So of course it ended up in the backlog and <laughs> I recently picked it up again. And next thing you know, you know we have this whole new console so it was pretty nice to, you know, to stumble upon it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. What devices, I mean, you said like a pet project on there. What kind of devices and projects are you using console for? Yeah. So um, I'm just starting out. So I actually just have a single device. Uh, That's all right. It's yeah. ST Microelectronics. So I have it right here with me. And cool. uh, I have a nuclear shield on it. So just tracking different um, sensors like temperature. Um, acceleration and so forth. I, as a hobby, I like to do water sports and uh, tracking statistics in the water. It's, you know, really hard. GPS doesn't really do justice. So my hope is to be able to capture, um, you know, really good metrics and make sense of the data. Um, so I have this device. I take it with me out in the water and, uh, you know, just trying to get, you know, figure out how I'm doing. <laughs> nice. So when you say water sports, what, what do you mean by water sports? Yeah, so I guess um, in specific, I do paddling. Uh, so I do dragon boating and outrigger canoe. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Um, so you have that one device there. Are there any devices, especially with 2.0, that you plan to connect in the future at all? Do you have plans to add more to it? Yeah, absolutely. So right now, as you can see, this is a very big device. Uh, it is <laughs> yeah. bulky. Uh, it's not waterproof, so I have to take extra care of it. Uh, eventually, I hope to to iterate on my design and you know make you know go with something smaller and then maybe just share it out with some friends and let them try it, try it out. So so certainly, I hope to be able to connect even more devices in the near future. Nice. So I gotta ask, has using console helped with anything with the water sports that you're doing with the paddling yeah. and stuff? I feel like it really has. And I don't know if this was because of the 2.0 or maybe it was always there and I just never got a chance to find out. Yeah. Um, but with the console 2.0, um, I seem to be able to integrate with uh, my KN, um, you know, kind of straightforward process. Um, mm -hmm. I also threw in there just Google Sheets just to make sure, you know, things data was getting across. Uh, yeah. so it was just very intuitive uh, to work with. I know y'all have uh, alerts now. Um, this was pretty nice because uh, essentially like my very first step is, does this work, right? And then how do we prove that this work rather than staring at the graph to see whether I see little, you know, dots of data flowing through, you know, as long as I get my alert, I know I'm good to go. So I don't have to stare at the graphs. So that's pretty neat. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So, I mean, you kind of answered this a little bit, but what are you most excited about with console 2.0 now that it's officially launched? Yeah, I certainly like the flows. Uh, I think it is so intuitive uh, to just connect and, and really just have a visual representation on, on how things are working together. Um, it's very easy for me to set up a dummy function, literally just to print out the data packets and just connect it. Uh, so it's I just find it very intuitive. And if anything, it's just making my development a lot easier. So, so thanks for, for putting that together. <laughs> Yeah, I will thank the development team for that. I'm I'm just kind of the marketing person. Yeah, right. unfortunately, I, yeah, I didn't have a hand in designing it. Unfortunately, but I'd love to take the credit. Um, we we had console 2.0 up on staging for about four weeks before the official release. Did you have a chance to go in and test anything and provide feedback when it was up on staging? 
So I don't know if I provided any um, official <laughs> feedback, but I will say um, from just using it uh, recently, I think two things that come to mind will be kind of like an autosave option. Uh, so you do have to always remember to go back and save your flows, for instance. Um, I like guess every time you move stuff around. Yeah, anything, yeah, yeah. It's like you forget that you have to, you know, <laughs> you're just you're just so used to autosave nowadays with everything else. Yeah. Um, I guess another thing that would be nice is sometimes I, you know, I'm, I'm in downtown Austin, which is pretty neat when I'm testing my device. But if I head over to my mom's house, unfortunately, the network there is not as great. She lives out in the, you know, in the hill country. Um, mm -hmm. It would be nice to have some sort of way of simulating or replaying um, my packets just so, you know, to kind of pretend that I'm already in the network so I can see the rest of my um, notes in my flow work uh, without necessarily having my device active because it's just, you know, offline. Yeah, yeah, no, that totally makes sense. And I know, you know, they released 2.0, but they're, they're still working, they're obviously still working on different things. So feedback from users, I think is still super important, even if it's not up on staging anymore. So that's, that's great, appreciate that. Um, and you talked about flows a little bit. Are there any other features in console? I mean, even 1.0, but especially now in 2.0 that you use most for your devices other than like, I mean, you said like the flows page, but there are specific things in console that you're using. Yeah, so I think as part of my flow, I have like a function in between, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, before it goes to my endpoint. And uh, I think in particular for what I'm doing, uh, I like how the functions have the ability to just automatically choose like the KN LPP decoder. Um, so that way I, you know, I don't want to have to do any bit shifting or anything, <laughs> you know, anything like that. I just want to get my numbers. Um, so, so it's nice just to have that integrated and, and available with just, you know, just clicking around. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you, and you did say you've used some of the integrations like my Cayenne and stuff. Have you used any others? Do you plan on using any others? Are there ones that you think would be helpful for like things that you're doing that you might like to see come up on console at some point? Um, so yeah. So I guess the other one um, I just recently put together was Google sheets, um, mostly because it's just very easy to do. And yeah. it just tells me, Hey, yeah, the data is there. It's flowing. Um, but yeah, I don't think I can think of anything at the moment. Uh, I, I guess at some point I am dealing with, uh, 3d data. Um, okay. so it would be really, really cool to be able to graph that. Uh, I think right now I found really just MATLAB and the processing, um, to be the two, I guess, kind of languages to help with uh, mapping and making sense of 3D data. Um, so yeah. anything to help with that, I think will be great. <laughs> I think IoT world and 3D are just, you know, um, they go hand in hand. Nice. Um, can you talk a little bit just like from kind of a new user perspective, you're not, obviously not a new console user, but 2.0 is pretty new. I mean, if, for people who are just starting to use the network and, you know, have never used console before, how easy do you think it is for them to kind of come on and onboard devices and set things up now that console 2.0 is out? Yeah, I, honestly, I, I thought it was pretty trivial. Um, what I did is I actually follow a tutorial. Um, I think it was on like Hackster IO. Um, and just kind of follow through. Of course, it's a little bit outdated because things are a little bit cleaner now, uh, but just following with the tutorial and then just kind of intuition <laughs> with uh, what's going on um, will get you there. I think um, I'm using Arduino. Um, they have excellent you know, resources, libraries, um, examples that can get you going pretty quickly. Um, so I think just leveraging not just the console, but then, you know, blogs and, you know, Arduino resources can, can get you started pretty good. Okay, awesome. Um, last thing, are there any like dream features? And again, you kind of answered this a little bit, but like, like I said, we're still working, you know, we always want to make console better and more intuitive. 2.0 is a huge improvement, obviously, but always want to be able to make more improvements. Are there any like major dream features for you or, you know, people, you know, things that they do that you would like to see for, you know, console 3.0, for whatever? Yeah, I think I'm just going to come back to that 3D <laughs> ability um, just yeah. because it's really where I am right now. And uh, I think 
if y'all can figure out a way of making that really easy, I think it would be a game changer, at least for me. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, we really look forward to seeing everything that you're doing on console. If you have any like really cool projects or anything, just share them with us and we can, you know, share them on our social media, get them out to people and let them see like, oh, look, Diana's out here paddling and, you know, however many meters per second or whatever you're measuring it, you know, and doing that all on console. So that's, that's really cool. So feel free to share any of that stuff with us. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming on today and chatting. We appreciate your feedback on 2.0 and we're grateful to have you as part of the people's network. And if there's anything else you can think of or anyone listening, drop me an email. It's just jacob at helium.com or you can get on our Helium Discord on the console channel. And we've got, I shoot 80,000 plus members and counting on that Helium Discord. So it's really, it's really a great resource for people coming on, you know, trying to use the network, get some information and things like that. And then if anyone's looking to get started on console 2.0, you can go over to helium.com and there's a link right up at the top of the homepage that will take you to the console um, setup and get you going. All right, Diana, you have any last things you wanna say about console 2.0? Um, no, I just wanna say thank you and uh, yeah, keep up the good work, I guess. <laughs> All right, no, that's awesome. I'll pass that on to the engineers. Okay, right. thank you so much. We appreciate it. Yeah, see ya.